I'm Robert Rinke, one of the developers of Levin and Rinke Development. We've developed Portofino. There's five 21-story towers. There's 765 units here, part of the resort. And we've developed Beach Club on Pensacola Beach. Uh, it's 92 units, a Gulf Front Resort condominium. We developed Emerald Isle, another resort condominium on the beach here, 128 units, and developed uh, verandas on Pensacola Beach. Uh, roughly a thousand resort condominiums on Pensacola Beach. A typical day for uh, us as developers, you, uh, to make something successful, to make a development go, you have to have the right design. You spend a tremendous amount of time researching and coming up with a vision for that design. Then you work closely with the architects to make sure that uh, they get that part of it correct. The design is critical. Then you've got to work with all the contractors in detail to make sure it gets built with quality. Everybody wants to sue a, um, a developer, so you have to um, look at every detail and make sure that it's over-designed, over-built. Uh, then you have to get it built, so you're working with the contractors physically on site. And super important part of your day is you've got to get them pre-sold. So we spend, I spend a tremendous amount of my time in the sales process. In fact, I did at Portofino, I personally did all of the sales presentations. So my typical day, um, initially, tons of times with the architects and research. Then I went into a pre-sale mode where I spent 10, 12 hours a day working with all the realtors and clients to get the momentum started and enough pre-sales. Then my typical day went to um, four, five, six hours a day with the contractors. Spend another four or five hours a day in the sales process. Uh, people do want to hear directly from the developer uh, and that's what I would do. I would directly get with the clients and the realtors and do the full presentation on every detail of the development. Uh, there's nothing but air out here in pre-construction, so somebody's got to walk them through all the details of what they're going to wind up with, and they've got to have confidence that's going to happen. And uh, that's a huge part of the process. One that I believe most developers leave to somebody else, which I think is, um, that does not work for us. So we believe in uh, detailing every aspect of that process all the way through ourselves. I can tell you what qualifications I think have worked for me and how I did it. I know there's a lot of different ways to become a, a good developer. Uh, I'm a big believer in that you need a strong background in real estate. The way I did start in my career is uh, I went to college, I got a business degree, I took a corporate job, I moved up in that job in management with Dillard's Department Stores in an ex executive development training program. Uh, I managed 300 people, had my own store, so I got, I guess, a lot of experience managing people. Okay, you've got to be able to deal with people, make presentations, uh, get your vision across, it, it's critical. Uh, with passion. That's one thing I think you have to have as a background. Number two, I went into real estate. I opened up my own real estate company and I dug into this market, Pensacola Beach mainly, um, and became an expert in this particular market. And by working directly with clients, selling them real estate, I learned what product on Pensacola Beach was lacking. Okay, so I thought I found a niche, something this beach needed, and I dealt with hundreds of clients 
So that was reinforced. That's really my formula, how it worked for me. I'm sure there's other ways. I'm sure there's corporate um, jobs that, that I know of that people have done in real estate, commercial real estate, where they've had training uh, working for large development companies. I didn't do that, so I'm sure there's other ways to do it, but uh, I did it with owning my real estate company, finding a niche, um, and then designing a product that I felt was lacking, and then presented it to um, everybody I could, and uh, got pre-sales enough to move forward and make it happen. The best part of being a developer and there's lots of good parts of, of being a developer, but I guess the best part of being a developer is you get to build and create something that, that you came up with. That's the fun part to me is doing the research, trying to find that niche, trying to fill those needs for that given market, that given development, uh, push in to do a quality development better than anybody's done it before, whether you do that or not, but that's the goal. You're pushing for that. You're out researching, making it happen. You're creating something. Creating something is exciting and fun. Okay, it's, it's great. Another part I love about the job is working directly with the people. We're selling people dream resort properties on Pensacola Beach with lifestyle involved, health, fitness, relaxation, recreation, adventure. That's fun to me, so we deal directly with the people. They're most of them are totally excited about it and they're living their dream and you're part of that. It's fun. Those are the good parts of the job. The bad part of the job is you go through developers, big developers, small developers, lots of times they wind up bankrupt. And the reason they do, you look at Trump, how many times has he been financially bankrupt, in trouble? You go along and you build five of these towers and you make whatever money you make on five towers. And then you're building the sixth one. Things are going along fine. You're building the sixth one and here comes the economic hard times. And all of a sudden that property that you pre-sold for X is not worth that. And a lot of people can't close if it's not worth. They can't get the bank loans. And so you took a look at this last economic downfall and you take a look on the Gulf Coast, most of the developers were right in the middle of a development. They're developers. Times were good. It takes two to three years to finish one of these developments. Once you start, these are high-rise, complicated, time-consuming developments. So by the time, from when you start to when you finish, if those economic times are not good at the end, a lot of times people don't close and the developer is bankrupt. So the bad part of this job is uh, the huge financial risk, which is the stressful part of the job. It's uh, you got to take the bad with the good. That's the bad part. Final one piece of advice to that would enable someone to improve their chances of being a successful real estate developer. I started on Pensacola Beach and I opened up my own real estate company and I dug in and I understood the value of every piece of property and why it had its value and I understood how to differentiate the different properties, what their pros and cons were for those pieces of property. You've got to be able to be a complete expert in your given market. Two ways to do that, jump full time into selling that market or become an appraiser, a real estate appraiser in that market and do that full time for three to five years. Make sure you know your real estate market backwards and forwards before you develop anything in that market.